Hey crafters, welcome back to Ila de Moco. So, we got one last session's worth, which is probably a couple episodes worth of crafting, and then we're going to, I think, be able to get ourselves to the moon. As you can see, I've filled up the wall of focus and expanded it, which should help out those who were worried that the tree was off-center from the board. Now we're all squared up. I know the board looks pretty full, but actually the moon is on the second one, so everything in these four boards here, Ender, I.O., Mind Chem, Draconic, and some more AE, is all stuff that's going to wait until we get back from the moon trip. The thing that I want to take care of today, though, is get my AE automation started because I want to do some stuff between now and the moon launch, and start in on getting the rocket. In fact, I want to get all the way up through here today and then do the moon in my next session, mostly because my wife actually wants to see me go to the moon and she's asleep right now. So uh, we're going to take care of that in order. Then I've got some random list stuff. Pretty much I want to take care of everything cardboard box and above. It's all pretty quick stuff, so I think I'm going to start there after I get these 32 heavy plates cooking away. That's pretty much the the big time crunch, so we're going to start with those. And that's pretty easy. It's just going to take a while, so I just need some steel plates. Luckily I did all the prep work to get these going. I'm going to need some aluminum going off camera. Oh, oh that's right. The aluminum plates are actually in here. And I think it's the bronze plates. Yes. Pretty sure, anyway. We're going to find out. You take these and you stripe them into the electric compressor. Like so. And they'll should... Hmm. I'm doing something wrong. Right. Heavy. It might be tin. What's in heavy duty plates? Aluminum, steel, and bronze. Yeah, I just got them. Caddy Wampus. There we go. Alright, so those will slowly make into seal plates. That's what I need to build the rock. Now that that's going, we're going to head over here and grab this octubal compressed cobblestone. So I made this the last session. This is just a crafter. As you can see, I've gotten it all filled up with recipes to get octubal compressed cobblestone. And the reason I did that, well, both because I need that stuff for the nether portal, not nether portal, sorry, deep dark portal, but also because if you get the octubal stuff like I have, you could take it, dump it in a smelter, and it's going to vanish real quick. But So then if we come into the crafting terminal here, and we type bedrockium, see now I have a block of bedrockium, which is great because I can turn that into nine bedrockium ingots, which I will actually do. And I'm not going to use those right yet, but normally a bedrockium ingot, a single ingot, takes a chunk, a block of diamonds, so that's a good savings there. All right, so uh, what did I want to do next? Let's do... Actually, there's a better way to be doing these lists, I just realized. If I grab the things that I want into my inventory, I can keep track of what I want to do. So car most of these are pretty quick, so let's just plow through them real quick. And you might see a little something up there that I'm going to get to in a future episode, but... That's my ore sorting system, which I started work on between episodes here. So uh, let's do heart containers first, because those are pretty easy. Now, heart containers are Tinker's Construct. They use these miniature red hearts. Container. And as I said, they're pretty easy. It's just a jeweled apple, empty canister, a heart, and a necrotic bone, uh, which necrotic bone drops off of the wither skeletons. Weird, weird recipe here, but we need four of these because I got four hearts. And then I'm going to want four of these jeweled apples. One, two, three, four. And then I should be able to make my heart containers. Three, four. And I can wear a maximum of ten of those. So, And I think they go here. Yeah. So then I should slowly heal up. There you go. See? Orange hearts say I'm healing up to those new heart levels. So good. That is something I wanted to do, so let's just throw these back in as bedrockium's done. Uh, heart containers. So let's do cardboard. So what I did off camera is I threw some logs into my sag mill, and that made me wood pulp. Whoop, the wood pulp. There we are, right there. If I take this and 
just make a four of them, I get cardboard box. Now, I want a couple of these to take with to the moon. And the reason is moon dungeons, which I have to do, have spawners in them. And spawners are always good because a lot of the powered and player created spawners require either a broken spawner or a native spawner. Or, uh, what are they called? Stable spawner. Which are fairly, fairly difficult to get in the overworld, but very easy to get in moon dungeons. So I'm gonna try to collect a bunch of those spawners while I'm in the moon dungeons. So, good. Uh, what else did I need to do? That's cardboard boxes done. Oh, a magnet, yes. Since I'm gonna be up on the moon and things tend to fly forever on the moon, having a magnet up there is gonna be a great help. So, the one that I'm gonna make is the practicalities magnet, because it's actually the practicalities wear earth magnet, because it's extremely good. And these are pretty easy. Need a magnetic north. Need a magnetic south, which is just same thing, only redstone and, and lapis. And then I'm going to need four of these radiant cores, which, eh, not too bad. I've certainly got everything I need to make those. And so then I make this regular magnet. And then I can use that to make the rare earth magnet. Good. And the way that works is you put it on your hot bar and right click to activate it. Shift right click to activate it, I should say. And then that can just be moved into your inventory. And that'll pick up anything that, yeah, it just drops off. You see, I can't even throw things because, yeah, see, I can't even. So it just picks up anything nearby and dumps it right into my inventory. Uh, another thing I need to get going is I need to start cooking up the sky stone. Don't know. Oh, there it goes. Yep. A little bit of tick lag there. And that I need for the AE stuff I'm doing later. All right, good. I'm plowing through this stuff. A uh, ranged weapon. Okay, so I picked a ranged weapon, and I want to do the flux infused bow here, and that's subsidian rod, two electrum fluxed electrum ingots, and three string. That's actually not as that's not too bad. Flux dark ingots are going to take a little bit of work, but the subsidian rod we can make right now because that's just polarized obsidian and blaze powder. So had some of that sitting around from previous builds. Now. Oh, Fused fluxed electrum ingots are pyrothium dust and two fluxed electrum blend. Well, pyrothium dust is pretty easy. Got stuff to make that. I'll just bring that onto my person because I need to infuse it. And, and then this stuff, fluxed electrum blend, is just electrum blend infused with destabilized redstone. I need to make two of those, so I'm going to need four redstone, I believe. I believe it's one. 100 millibuckets per redstone, and then two electrum blend. So I think I've got I've got two electrum I can just throw into the macerator real quick. Actually, I should be able to make just electrum blend real quick, because that's just powders. I might have all the powders on me. Where's the electrum blend? Let's see if I can make that. Yes. In fact, it comes with two. So good. Now I just need some redstone. Boop. So what I do to infuse this is I'm going to need... Magma Crucible, I think it's going to be just four. I'll be able to see it over here. Yes, four. And then those will just go in there. All right, so that's done. So then we just go over here to the induction smelter. Get this lead out of here. Get the lead out. Ha! And then that goes just right in there, and that will become... So you only needed one in there. That will become my... Ingots. Electrum. There they are. Fused electrum. So then that goes there, that goes there. Obsidian rod right there, and then just some string. Easy peasy. And then I gotta charge that guy up. And I should grab some arrows. But that's not gonna be a huge problem. Those can go back in there, and that can go back in there. So let's get this guy charged up real quick. At least a little bit. I'll charge him up fully off camera. Oh yeah, he's charging up real fast. Okay, that'll be enough. And then go here. Ba -doo! Good. So that's going to do me great. The reason I need this up on the moon is because there are dual wielding bow skeletons up there that are really nasty and have a lot of knockbacks. So this will let me attack them. Now while I've got this bow, I'm going to I use that enchanter that I built last session. 
to make a power five book and an infinity one book. That'll give this bow a little bit of kick. Oh, I got, oh good, I got that arrow. So that'll be, that'll be good. And then there, so now we've got a infinity one power five. So now I should be able to, f oh, I was firing arrows without infinity. Well, now I've got infinity out of it. I guess I didn't need it. Oh no, I picked that arrow up. I don't think I actually need the arrows on me. We've got something called... Uh, see, I don't actually like carrying magnets on me most of the time because of just that thing is that I like to be able to throw things away when I want to. Now, I think the quiver mod or something fixed it so that... Yeah, I don't even have to have arrows on me as long as the bow's got infinity, so... Good. And yes, they do take into account that I shouldn't be able to pick those up. So, awesome. I have my ranged weapon for the moon. So that was all the extra things that I wanted to take care of. So let's head over to the to my AE server room. Now the main reason I want to do get into this is because there's some stuff that I want to automate off camera, but I want to show you kind of the basics of how AE is automated. And I'm sure plenty of you have seen this, but I still want to be able to show it because I like to show things once and then just do replication of that off screen. So right over here we have five inscribers, and in these for these inscribers, I have the inscriber plates that you use to make the various pieces for making the processors. And in the middle one, I've just got an empty one. Now what I've done here is hook it up to Ender IO Conduit so that I can basically automate this whole system easily. In fact, you can do this so that you don't even have to have the AE automation set up. You just dump the stuff in the chest and it goes. So in this chest, I've got everything I need in order to get the automation going. The big one is these basic item filters. So what I do is I'm going to go around to each of these, and this one's the engineering press, so I need to go into here, set this to in and out, and set extract to without redstone signal, and the insert part I need to put that and that. And the reason that you have to filter this is that these inventories in here aren't all that intelligent. They can't tell the difference between a diamond and a printed engineering circuit, so these can actually go in there even though, or they can be pulled into there even though they can't go over here. So having these filters in place will keep that from happening. So next we need to go over here. Oops, I'm, oh, there we go. We need to go over here. This one is the silicon press. Good. So once again, in and out, turn the redstone mode off on the extract filter in there, and then silicon. And then basically, I can go down to these two on the other ones and do the same thing. All right, now I've got the, the four corner one set up. Now it's time to do the main one. This one's a little bit trickier because you have to use three filters in order to get it to work. You gotta filter the bottom. Once again, this time this one's insert only because you don't ever have anything that can come out of here. And this one's the silicon, because you'll want the silicon always to go in the same spot. And then we go to the top here. Oops. This is also to insert, filter. And here we want to put our printed circuits. So that those will always go in the top spot. And then in the middle here, in the middle here, we want this one to be insert, extract, because this one will be the one oh, this will be the one that the processor comes out of and we want to filter that one so that it only does red redstone oops i filtered the wrong one that's okay put it in the insert so now what this should do is that if you just put the raw materials in here it'll combine it all into a processor oh. last thing i need to do is turn this to insert extract and then so let's try it out with an with an engineering core so if we did this right if we put this in there that in there and that in there it should all come out get pressed sucked back out and then put into this guy and then turned into a processor which it looks like it's gonna do there it goes yeah now these are pretty slow so they're we're gonna need to get some speed upgrades in them so good now we've got an automated way to do processors. In fact, we just have to dump stuff in this chest and it'll make processors. I don't have enough stuff to do processors right now. On me. 
I mean. So that's great. So that will take care of all of our processor needs for the time being. It's going to be a little slow even when I put speed upgrades in them, but it's going to be good enough for now. So let's make a speed upgrade real quick. There are a couple of them, which are... where are they? Oh no, it's not a speed upgrade, it's an acceleration card. That's what it's called. Dirt. All right, which is just an advanced card and uh, some Fluix. Advanced cards are pretty complicated and they require calculation processors, which I don't have a lot of, so we're just going to do, let's say, six of these. And then acceleration card. Just make, we'll make five for now so that each one can have an acceleration card. So then these can just go right up here, and that will make it go a lot faster from here on out.